All right, so AP Precalculus, brand new exam. These are the 2024 FRQs. I will admit I am not too versed in the scoring guidelines for these. I've only skimmed through the curriculum. I generally know what it is that you're looking for, but um, if I point out any corrections, I will put them in a pinned comment below. But um, let's take a look at these questions, okay? So that will be a first for me. Figure shows the graph of this function on this domain from negative 3.5 to 3.5. The points negative 3, 1, 0, 1, 3, 1 are on the graph of f. The function g is given by this. Okay, so they're giving you some other function. They're giving you a graph of f, and they're describing another function to you. The function h is defined by that. Find the value of h. Okay, so h of 3 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. So h of 3, we're really going to replace all the x's with 3. So just think about this guy. I prefer this notation. I'm not a huge fan of that notation. I know it's less parentheses, but it's kind of like a little bit. So you just replace the x with 3. So that's g of f of 3. And then how do we calculate f of 3? Well, we have a graph of f. And so what we want to look at is we want to look at f of 3, what the y value is, because that's the value of the function. So the y value is 1, right? So this is going to be, so you replace that f of 3 with 1. So this is g of 1. How do we handle g of 1? Well, to do that, we've got to plug this into our calculator. 2.916, 0 0.7 to the first power. And uh, let me double check. I think this is a calculator question. Yes, it is a calculator question. So I'm going to pull this up and just, um, oops, quit that, clear that. We'll do 2.916. 916 times 0 0.7 uh, just to the first power, right? Because it's 1. So that gives me 2.04, oops, and three decimal places is normally how we round these things, 2.041, okay? Uh, or indicate is not defined. 2, okay, that's i. 2i, i2 is um, find all values of x where f of x is equal to 1 or indicate there are no such values. So when is f of x equals to 1. That's where the y value is equal to 1, right? So that's going to occur here and here, 3 and negative 3. So that occurs at 3 and negative 3. B, find all values of x as decimal approximations for where g of x is equal to 2, and it, or indicate there. So g of x equals to 2 is basically us doing 2.916, 0 0.7 of the x, and setting it equal to 2. So what we're going to do then is we want to graph this on our calculator. Probably the most straightforward way to do this is to graph the lines y equals 2 and graph the line 2.916 times 0.7 raised to the x power. Now, um, windowing uh, is really useful when you're narrowing it down because I want the solutions um actually they didn't they didn't say any particular solution so i might go from negative usually default is zoom standard negative 10 to 10 and i want the y values to go from say 0 to 3 cuz i know what needs to hit 2 so i want to graph and see where it inter intersects 2 okay all right so it looks like there and it looks like it keeps going down even if i so just that right at that point right there it crosses the 2 and so we do second calculate and we're going to do intersection between this curve that curve and then the guess you just put somewhere nearby it doesn't even have to be that close just closer if there's multiple you just need to be closest to that one so that's going to occur at x equals 1.057 determine the end behavior of g as x increases without bound express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit so the the as n x increases without bound is the limit as x goes to infinity of g of x and so what we want to know is when I do when this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this is an exponential function. And because this number is less than 1, it's going to shrink, shrink, shrink. We saw the graph. It's going to shrink and approach 0. So that is the limit notation. You want to say positive infinity because we're increasing and going to the right there. Part C, determine if f has an inverse function. So graph of f has an inverse function. So remember, there's a couple of facts about inverse functions, right? If we were to graph an inverse function, right you would you would you would reflect it over the line y equals x and functions only exist if they they pass that vertical line test right and that vertical line test it, when i flip it it becomes more of a horizontal line test in other words the inverse is only it can only be found 
if like this thing passes a horizontal line test. That means it, it intersects only one point on the horizontal line. The other way to look at it is to say, for a given value of y, for example, this y value of 1, there's a multiple x value. So I cannot find the inverse of 1 because there are multiple x values that do that. So we'd say no because there are multiple values, multiple values of x that map to y equals 1. Okay, as an example for uh, f of x, which means that if I know y equals one, it does. It means you see, if there were an inverse, that would mean if I told you a y value, you could automatically know what an x value is, right? But if I tell you for f of x, I give you a graph, I say the y value is one, you cannot tell me uniquely what the x value corresponds to, and that's why the inverse doesn't exist because that the the x value could be negative three, zero, or three. And that's not unique. Give a reason of your answer based on the definition of a function and the graph y equals f of x. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know what the difference between 1 and 2. Um, this is probably, the, I guess, the justification for 2 based on the definition of a function and the graph. So it fails the horizontal line test line test. Well, so definition of function means there has to be unique value. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how they would want you to word this. This is the this is the part where it's like, mm, I'm not entirely sure how they're going to score exactly. But if you base on the definition of a function means that for a, a value of x, so for example, suppose, you know, f exists. And I want f inverse of one. Um, is not a unique value. Because um, it could be 3, negative 3, 0, or 3. That's kind of what I mean by the definition based on the graph. Though, if the, if the, if the y value of f is 1, then the x value is going to be kind of in matching in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure the distinction between 1 and 2. I'm curious to see what the scoring guidelines would say exactly what they were looking for between those two there.